I was told that I was going to win the Intercontinental title belt back from Owen on that night. The stipulation to my challenge was that if I couldn't beat him and win, I was going to have to kiss his ass. We really built that up on TV as a major deal. It was another simple, easy to understand storyline. So the day came and I was talking to Owen in the back and we were throwing a few things together for the finish of the title match. I said to him, well, what if we do that thing where I come in for the elbow and you rotate your back around and pick me up upside down and give me the tombstone pile driver? Then you cover me and I'll kick out right before the three count. I added, now Owen, I don't trust just anybody to do a pile driver to me, but you can do it, right? And he said, yeah. I said, you're going to go to your knees, right? And he said, no, I'm going to drop to my ass. Then I said, well, you need to go to your knees, right? And he said, no, I dropped to my ass. That's two times I said that. And I was thinking, I'm dealing with Owen Hart, brother of Bret Hart and son of Stu Hart. I guess he knows what he's doing. He's ribbing me about dropping to his ass instead of his knees. Owen was a hell of a technician. When he assured me I'd be okay, I took his word that I'd be okay. I didn't think twice about it. I had mentioned my concerns to him twice, but in an inverted tombstone pile driver, done the way Undertaker does, it's always going to the knees, not the ass. So I figure, Owen's got it. He knows my concern. I'd asked him twice about it, and that was the big spot in the match. When I came out that night, boy, people were ready to see Stone Cold Steve Austin do the Stone Cold Stunner on Owen for the title belt. The match went along, and it was a good match. The right style of match for that year. It was a solid wrestling match. We were going through some things near the end that could be finishes, but they weren't. The crowd was really into all the false finishes. Eventually, we set up the pile driver spot. I spun Owen around, and he landed on his feet. Then he picked me up, upside down, and wham! Dropped straight to his ass. There was simply no room for me to protect my head. I weighed 250. He weighed 225 or thereabouts at the time. But with the jump up and the impact down, man, I got spiked head first in the mat hard as hell. That's one of the things that's going to turn you into a quadriplegic quicker than anything. It's called actual load. It's not a whiplash thing, but a major impact blow to the spinal cord. Boom. I remember kind of picking my head up from the mat and telling the referee, Earl Hebner, tell him not to fucking touch me, I can't move. Earl got up and told Owen, don't touch him, he can't move. I said, tell him to buy me some time. Earl told him that. So Owen started chanting to the crowd, now he's going to have to kiss my ass. He was buying me the time I needed to recover. A minute or a minute and a half went by, and I finally started getting a little bit of feeling back in my limbs. My shoulders and my anterior delts were on fire. It took everything I had to bend my legs and try to get into a crawl position, but I couldn't crawl on my hands because I couldn't use my hands yet. Still, we had to get to the finish, and I had to win. So I was crawling around on my elbows, and I told the referee, roll up for the win. He told Owen what I'd called, and the next thing that happened was I did the worst-looking roll-up in wrestling history because I couldn't use my limbs. Somehow I managed to hold Owen on his back and get a three-count out of it. I meant for that to be the end of it, but Owen kicked right out after three. Why? To make himself look strong like he was barely beat. That kick out hurt me like hell, too, and could easily have injured my neck further. I should have lain there and gotten medical attention, but it didn't happen that way. It was one of those deals where it was a highly anticipated match. There were a lot of 316 shirts out there that night. A whole lot of Stone Cold fans. All the referees came out to the ring, and it took three of them to pull me to my feet. I got my arms around them, and they tried to hold me up and hand me the title belt, but my legs were dragging, and I could barely walk. I got to the back, and I was visibly shaken. The whole thing just scared the crap out of me. As it got me onto a stretcher, I just wanted to know what the hell had happened. They took me to the hospital for x-rays, and I was released. I bought myself a 12-pack of beer, laid in bed at the hotel, and finally went to sleep. Despite everything, I got up the next day and drove to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to do Raw, cut a promo on Owen, because I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. My delts were burning like crazy, and I couldn't rustle, but I went and covered my ass on TV. Here's what I said to Owen Hart the next night on Raw is War. Owen Hart, I'm not going to listen to the doctors. I'm not going to wear this piece of crap they gave me, this stupid neck brace. The fact that you dropped me on my head don't mean a damn thing to me. The fact of the matter was, you were too stupid to cover me when you had the chance. 
The bottom line is you're a loser, Owen Hart. Not because I say you are, but because it runs through your veins because your mom and dad gave that to you, and I can't do nothing about that. Tonight I truly will open up a can of whoop-ass and show you exactly what Austin 316 means. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. The next few days I went and got a bunch of doctor's reports. Every doctor I went to said to get out of wrestling. The muscles in my hand were starting to atrophy and my legs were becoming hyper-reflexive and jumpy. And muscles would start pulsing in my back. The medical name for my condition was central cord compression. But I was told that I could get some relief from surgery, so I set out to find a doctor who could do it. Then I met Dr. Lloyd Youngblood. He's a neurosurgeon, the best of the best. I didn't have an appointment, but he spent three hours with me discussing my problem in language I could understand. So I got the big operation in 1999, a full two years after the pile driver. It was two years of nagging pain. At that point, I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back or not. I had no idea if I was ever going to get back in the ring. If I'd had to venture a guess, I would have guessed that my wrestling career was over. After Steve had his neck surgery in San Antonio with Dr. Youngblood, I flew down there to see him in the hospital. I think when I got there, Steve had been able to get a night's sleep, and when I walked in, he was sitting up in bed eating ice cream. I told him I thought only kids who had their tonsils removed got ice cream in the hospital, but he said he had connections. Boy, did he. You would have thought that it was Elvis or John Wayne himself in the hospital there in Texas because all the nurses and other personnel were just great and truly felt it was an honor to attend to their homegrown wrestling star. Steve always has been able to connect with his audience and he had already won all the nurses over in the short time he had been hospitalized. There were a bunch of Austin 316 fans working in that hospital, let me tell you. He was in amazingly good spirits because many of the horrible symptoms that he had been experiencing with his neck injury were gone. He had found some significant relief, even though he still had some numbness in his hand and fingers. But Steve knew, and I knew, that he would have to address his wrestling career sooner then later. If Deborah had not been there, we probably would have talked about it, but we didn't. That was probably a smart thing, but I could tell by the look in his eyes that he had unfinished business to attend to. The thing was, neither of us knew when it would happen. Anyway, I had the surgery and it went fine. I got level three and four fused together. It took close to a year, but Dr. Youngblood finally gave me the clearance to get back in the ring. Owen Hart never called me after he piled, drove me, and injured me. I heard that his brother Brett kept telling him to call me, but we never connected. Did I hate Owen? No, that's just the business, and we weren't really friends to start with. Did I want to work with him after that? No, I didn't. I didn't want to do business with him again. Right or wrong, that's how I felt. Sometimes I wonder how it could have happened. As good a technical wrestler as Owen was, he should have known that he needed to drop to his knees, not his ass, to protect my neck. When he didn't call me at my house afterwards, that kind of pissed me off a little bit. It was like, hey, if I damn near paralyzed someone, I'd be calling them every damn day of the week. The WWE merchandise department came out with a t-shirt that said Owen 316, and on the back it said, I just broke your neck. Uh, I thought that was pretty damn cheesy. If I was going to get any of the royalties off that one, maybe I would have liked it better. But if he's going to put the money in his pocket for messing my life up, I wasn't real fond of that. Anyway, it was just one of those things, and I'm still paying for it now. That's the way it goes in the wrestling business. It ain't ballet. Things happen. And that time it happened to me. But I ain't going to sit here and cry about it. I just deal with it. Every single day. And I will continue to deal with it for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, Owen had a freak accident on May 23, 1999, when he accidentally fell over 40 feet from an overhead catwalk to the ring and died immediately from the fall. No one deserves to die like that. That was bad, and I felt sad for Owen's family, his wife, and his children. I'm really sorry, and was always sorry, that Owen Hart died. Honestly, 
I was surprised that they were even doing a tombstone pile driver because no one does it better than the undertaker. It's one of the dead man's signature moves. Wrestlers usually don't or shouldn't use other talents, finishing moves for their own high spots. But that's another story for another time. My take on this incident was this. Owen was a good person and a hell of a wrestler. He was born into wrestling royalty in my eyes as the youngest son of the legendary tough guy and longtime promoter, Stu Hart. I always felt that Owen may have thought that he had let his family down, specifically his dad and older brother, Brett, with a poorly executed maneuver. It would be like the son of Michael Jordan being cut from his basketball team. It just wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. And I think Owen was so taken aback by what happened that he never cleared the air with Steve. I will guarantee you one thing, Owen cared, and I know he felt bad about what happened because we used to discuss it often. When Steve was out of commission because of the neck injury, Owen used to ask me about Steve all the time. I would say to him, why don't you call him? Owen's response was always along the lines of, I'm going to, or I will, I just feel so bad about what I did. Steve and Owen never had the conversation they needed to have, the conversation both men felt in their hearts before Owen's untimely death. It's one face-to-face -face meeting I wish I could have orchestrated.